So at GeoPost, we've set the objective to be net zero by 2040, that's 10 years before Paris Agreement. Um, so what does this mean in terms of action plan, in terms of, of tracking and in terms of transparency? Thanks Sophie. So yes, you're absolutely right. We have a science-based target uh, to reach net zero by 2040 and we're very clear about how we're going to reach that target. So it's important to note that GeoPost today, 90% of our carbon emissions actually come from the trucks and the vans that we have on the road. So that's really where we're focusing um, our, our efforts is to decarbonize um, our transport and to move away from fossil fuels towards alternative energies. So obviously when we look at it from a first and a last mile perspective, we're focusing in on electrifying the fleet, but not only. And again in line haul, we're looking at diversifying our line haul fleet towards alternatives that include um, electric and electric technologies, but also, for example, as, an, as a transition fuel, um, HVO and biofuels. And it's really important to us that we're also able to show and demonstrate how we're progressing towards our goals. So one of the ways we do that, for example, is on an annual basis, we publish our pathway, but also our achievements to date as part of our sustainability report with a full um, GHG inventory. And then we're also working on innovative ways of making sure that we are on track towards meeting the goals. And one of the ways we do that is through the carbon budget, which sits not only our carbon trajectory for each BU, um, alongside our financial um, pathway. So what, what are we investing, what are we spending on the transition? And it's a way for us to ensure strong governance and um, that we're on track to meeting our goals. So uh, when it comes to transport decarbonation, uh, you may only think about fleet electrification, but what role do people and technology uh, can play in our objective? Absolutely. So I know that I mentioned earlier that a lot of what we're doing is around electrifying our fleets, and you're absolutely right. It's not only um, about what we can do from an operational perspective. It's also about how do we um, embark and onboard the wider um, uh, group around um, our sustainability goals. Um, I strongly believe that sustainability isn't only um, the responsibility of a sustainability team, it's a group-wide responsibility. And part of our job is also to kind of build and develop and nourish a culture of sustainability within the group, so that at the end of the day we all feel accountable for whether or not the group um, achieves net zero, for example. And again, around technology and new, uh, new ways of thinking, I think that also brings an immense amount of value um, to what we're doing. And we have some really interesting examples um, that came out last year, for example, our carbon calculator, which is an accredited tool that we developed in-house that really is looking to take the hassle out of getting um, reliable scope-free emissions data uh, for our customers. So they know that we're able to provide them with uh, good quality, reliable data, so hassle-free. Um, and we also have some interesting uh, work coming out of some of our BUs in Europe where we're using autonomous delivery vehicles um, in certain city centres, which is another way for us to innovate on our road to um, net zero. So, um, on our way to net zero, what uh, are the largest hurdles you see on the way and how are you already dealing with them? Yes, so um, it's not always easy and I think we've made a really good progress um, towards our goals. However, now I think we're getting to a point where some of the ch other challenges are starting to come to the fore. Um, so on the first and last mile fleet, I think today we're operating around 9,000 um, low emission vehicles. And what we're seeing now is that charging is becoming an issue. So we lack a space um, on some of our sites to ensure that we have the right number of charges um, to, to support that transition. But also we um, in coming up against problems related to power on the grid, for example. So not necessarily having enough power to be able to charge the vehicles when and, uh, and where we need them. So we're working on finding solutions to some of those challenges. But I think also more broadly speaking, it's around, um, for example, how do we continue to demonstrate that we are make, making a credible difference and that we're really working hard to decarbonize in face of tighter regulations around greenwashing. So obviously we want to communicate in an open and honest way, but still be able to get across that you know, the work that we're doing um, is making a difference and that we're doing it in a very um, credible and serious manner.